Hello everyone and welcome back for another video from Forward Aviation. Today we will be explaining how to use the autopilot feature on commercial airliners in Microsoft Flight Simulator X. We will be demonstrating on a Boeing 737 and Airbus A321. So without further delay, let's get flying. As always, begin by loading into the game and selecting your location and aircraft. We will be flying from Minneapolis first in a Boeing 737-800. Begin by applying your parking brakes and your throttle at idle as you don't want to be moving anywhere while setting up. Begin by locating the autopilot panel on the aircraft, which should be built into the dashboard of the plane. Next, become orientated with the following features before we proceed. The navigation GPS switch, the autopilot master buttons, the flight director switch, Auto Throttle Switch, Speed Hold Knob, Altitude Holds Button and Knob, Heading Select Button, Vertical Speed Dial, Heading Knob, Course Knob, VOR Lock Switch, Navigational Radio, and the Approach Button. The Approach Button and Navigational Radio will be focused on in the next episode when we explain how to use ILS for your approach. Now that you have become orientated with the Autopilot Panel, you are all set to begin learning how to use it. To fly with autopilot in a commercial jet like this one, we recommend you already have a prior flight plan loaded into your flight. To learn about how to do this, you can reference our prior video, How to Make a Flight Plan in FSX. Begin by making sure both your flight director switch and autopilot master buttons are completely off prior to takeoff. Start by setting your initial flight altitude. We will be setting it to flight level 340 or 34,000 feet as this is the standard cruising altitude of a 737. Next, we will begin by setting our auto throttle speed to 250 knots. For those of you who don't know, knots are the unit of speed used in aviation. This will be discussed in a future video. Next, set your vertical speed. Vertical speed is the amount of altitude climb per minute. So as we have hours set to 1,200, that means we will climb 1,200 feet every minute. Make sure not to set this too high as your aircraft will lose lift and you will stall. Next, if you are flying automatic using your flight plan, switch the navigation GPS button to GPS. This just means it will follow your flight plan. If you are flying manual, keep this on nav and use the heading knob during flight. One more time, ensure your flight director, autopilot master, and auto throttle switches are all off as these will affect your takeoff. Now, time to take off. Eighty knots, V one, rotate. Positive ray. Gear up. Now that we are in the air and at a safe climb out of the airport, if you are cleared by yourself or ATC, you can begin using autopilot. This becomes a process of multitasking, ensuring that while you turn on autopilot, you do not lose control of the aircraft. Begin by turning on the flight director switch. Next, turn on the auto throttle and altitude hold. Continue by switching the autopilot master to on. Next, if flying VOR, turn on VOR lock. If flying using the heading dial, select heading hold and begin turning it to the desired degree. Now, by clicking shift 3, you should see your aircraft lining up with the flight plan. As you can see, there is another dial we haven't used, the course knob. This is for ILS and to be explained in the next episode of the series. Now, transferring back to the ground in an Airbus A220. Once again, please orientate yourself with these features of the autopilot panel. They are situated differently than they would be in a Boeing aircraft the navigation GPS button, AP or autopilot master button, auto throttle button and speed knob, altitude hold button and knob, heading knob, vertical speed dial, and lock button. Now, make sure your flight director and autopilot master switches are off as well as setting the parking brake. Airbus controls are consolidated, different from Boeing. Next, in Airbus aircraft, many of the dials, switches, and buttons are combined. 
So in this instance, the speed, heading, altitude, and vertical speed knobs all act as buttons to activate the designated purpose. Begin by setting your initial flight altitude. We will be setting it to flight level 360 or 36,000 feet, as this is the standard cruising altitude of an A321. Next, we will begin by setting our auto throttle speed to 250 knots. Next, set your vertical speed. We have ours set to 1,200. Make sure it is not set too high as your aircraft will lose lift and you will stall. To continue, if you are flying automatic using your flight plan, switch the navigation GPS button to GPS. This just means it will follow your flight plan. If you are flying manual, keep this on nav and use the heading knob during flight. One more time, ensure your flight director, autopilot master, and auto throttle switches are all off, as these will affect your takeoff. Now, time to get flying. Eighty knots. V one. Rotate. Positive rate. You're up. Now that you are climbing away from the airfield and have been cleared by yourself or ATC, you can begin the process of turning on autopilot. Begin by clicking the button reading ATHR, which stands for Auto Throttle, and then clicking the speed hold knob trying not to change the speed. Repeat this process by clicking the altitude knob. Turn on the AP master switch and then select lock, which will begin lining up your plane with the flight path. Now you're all set to continue flying. Thank you for flying with us today. We hope you enjoyed today's content. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up. To support our channel and to hear more of our explanations on the world of aviation, hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications to stay updated. Come fly with us again on Forward Aviation. See you next time.